My name is Zach Sargent. I'm a technical marketing engineer with ServiceNow. Um, today I'd like to talk to you about Azure and how to integrate ServiceNow with Azure. Um, this is probably one of the most frequently asked questions that I get uh, lately, especially with the big push that Microsoft has had in marketing Azure to their installed base uh, and their legacy customers. It comes up a lot in conversation. So let's talk about how we get started. Um, what is it that we do to integrate uh, Azure to ServiceNow? And uh, these are called setting up a service principle and a set of EA credentials for the billing. So just to start off with, let's do the service principle. This has become a really common question. So as we look at ServiceNow and we're looking up what it takes to get started and get connected with Azure, we see this credential item in the menu. So credentials, service principles. You can think of a service principle as something like a service account. If you're used to Windows administration, uh, these are the kinds of things that you would set up to automate processes talking to each other within your Active Directory domain. So a service principle is basically a special account. It gets created inside of the Azure portal. And we're going to need three pieces of information. We're going to need the tenant ID, the client ID, and a secret key for that client ID. And to set these things up is not, uh, not intuitive. There's nothing in the portal interface that tells you these names specifically. Here we have the Azure portal, and the first thing we're going to want to do is to make sure that we have permissions to actually create a service principle. So within AD, we're going to look at user settings. Typically, we would look up our own user here, but since this is a brand new account, I'm not really going to have a whole lot here. So the user settings, um, yes, users can register applications. Sometimes in a larger environment, this will be set to no. And if this is no, then you, as a user in Active Directory, actually have to have administrative privileges. So the first thing we need to do is check the app registrations thing. Um, the second piece, The second piece is actually to check under users and groups. Here I don't have many users and groups. Sometimes there will be a lot more people listed here, but here it's just me. So I know that my role is such that I have administrative privileges here. But just to be thorough, you want to look at your directory role. And if it's set to user here, and you weren't checking the uh, uh, box on the previous thing that allowed users to register applications, then you're going to have to contact an administrator for your domain to make sure either them create a service principal role for you or make it where you can create uh, a service principal role. All right, so there's one more bit of information that we're going to keep. While we're looking at properties under Active Directory, um, we can grab the tenant ID. This little field down here called directory ID, that's actually your tenant ID to ServiceNow. So we're going to click to copy that. We're going to go back over to our ServiceNow tab and paste that sucker in there. Okay. Next, we're going to need our client ID and our secret key. So to do that, we're going to have to actually register an application. As you can see, we don't have any applications registered here. 
So we're going to create a new one. Again, in a larger organization, you're going to notice a lot of stuff in this page, probably. Um, other people that have registered service principles, you might be able to use one of theirs for this automation process. So I'm going to fill in a couple of items here. I like to use the instance URL um, as the sign-on URL here. It doesn't really matter for anything that we're doing with this application. It's just kind of an extra piece of metadata. And now we've created our, our application account, um, our API account. So we're going to go into that. And here you're going to see this application ID. And again, we have this nice, convenient little click to copy link. So we're going to grab that, take it back over, and paste that into our client. Two out of three. OK. So where do we get that key? Well, right here, under keys. We're going to have the ability to create a new key. So we're going to call this first key. We're going to make it good for, let's call it two years. And we're going to save it. Ta-da! Here's my secret key. So we're going to cut that, paste it here into ServiceNow, and I should have an active service principle um, here at the bottom. Yes, for the sake of this uh, blogging, I have actually shamelessly registered the domain serviceno.com. I thought it was clever, so there you go. Now, we're not quite done over here. So we've created this application identity, but it doesn't actually have any permissions to do anything yet. So it needs to be added to the subscriptions that we want to pay attention to. I'll go back this way. Actually, I think I need to go down here to the bottom. Subscriptions. And so when we add this permission in, we'll then be able to use it to make API calls. It always seems slower when I'm doing a video. I don't know why. Okay, as you can see, I have a couple of different subscriptions under my uh, account. I have the free trial account, which may have been set up expressly for this purpose. Hmm, go figure. So here's our trial account. We're going to go into access control. Now a lot of times nothing shows up over here. Um, so we're going to add something here. We're going to select a role for our service principal. So what do we want it to do? Um, owner contributor are typically uh, the things that we're going to need for a service principal who's going to be standing up VMs and uh, manipulating them with the API. So owner obviously gives full control, although contributor is just fine. Um, this is typically reserved for a more DevOpsy kind of role. Um, anything less is not going to give us what we want, so I'm just going to go with owner. When in doubt, go with root permissions. Don't do that. I'm just kidding. All right. So here you see uh, my name, but that's not really what we want, right? We want the service note principle. And I'm going to select that. And now that has been made an owner. So I now have all the permissions I need to go back into service now and start doing things. Now, if I've done everything correctly, this is the moment of truth, I'll be able to come in here and say get subscriptions, and it'll tell us what subscriptions this account has access to. Oh, looky there, there's a free trial subscription. Sure enough. 
I can go into that subscription. Now your company may have set up lots of different subscriptions for different departments. Um, and those departments can wall off your automation simply enough by not allowing your service principal to have access to it. Or you may decide that you're setting up a test lab environment and that lab environment is the only thing you want to automate. So there's some flexibility in how you grant those permissions. Okay, this is my favorite link, create discovery schedule. So at this point, I actually am able to kick off a discovery. Uh, it's going to go out and find all the things in that subscription. As it turns out, I don't actually have anything in that subscription to, to go find, um, but this is the process that you need to be able to do a successful discovery. Discover now, and it's off to the races. Um, also, it will save that discovery schedule by doing that, so it's able to you know use that on a regular basis. So I think I set it to like once a day at midnight. So you might be thinking, okay, that's pretty cool. I guess we're all set up, but it turns out that we're not. Um, there's actually another whole portal that we have to explore, uh, the EA portal. And the EA portal is a little bit different. Um, I don't have an enterprise account and I didn't sign an enterprise agreement with Microsoft just for the purposes of creating this video. Strangely enough, I know. Um, so instead, I'm going to show you um, the EA portal using ServiceNow's uh, uh, credentials and uh, an account, but I'm going to have to blur out some of the things because obviously we can't let you have our you know lab environments. So uh, you know if you notice some things that are blurry, don't adjust your set. It's uh, uh, I'm doing that on purpose just to make sure that we have the right things going on here. So here I have a different instance of ServiceNow that's not been set up. Um, it doesn't have any valid billing credentials. So uh, let's go in here and see what our demo data is telling us um, just in terms of what's happening here. So download credentials, enrollment number, and key. Um, I don't have an enrollment number as previously mentioned because I did not sign an agreement just to make the video. So um, we're going to go find that enrollment number, and then we're also going to find out where this access key is. So to get there, you actually need to go to a site, ea.azure.com, ea.azure.com. Um, I don't know if you can read my tiny screen writing there. I like high resolution. I cannot lie. All right, so once you have access to this portal, um, this number here in the upper left is the enrollment number. Um, there's nothing saying it's the enrollment number, you just kind of have to take our word for it. Um, but that, that that is the number that we're looking for. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go back to Chrome. And we're going to paste that sucker in there. Okay. Now let's go look for the key. Alright, so the key can be found under Download Usage. Now this, this page is actually pretty slow. Um, I think that it's the same backend that processes all of the API calls that people are making for their Azure billing. So uh, this is normal. Um, it's been normal since I've been using it. So it's a, it's a bit slow and not your fault, not your imagination. <laughs> Okay, if it says it's taking longer than usual, but that's the usual uh, uh, behavior, I'm not sure that they can really say that it's unusual anymore, can they? All right, so API access key. Um, this is the link that you want to go to, and those keys are either going to be in here, or if it's a new account, it's going to be like the secondary key here where it says key not set generate, you can generate a new key, you can use an existing API key, uh, but this is the this is the item that we're looking for. Now as you can see, this is a much larger piece of information um, than what our demo data might have had you believing. So it's almost like a certificate uh, that we're pasting in here. Okay, 
So let's update that. All right, so now I have all the information in here I need to go fetch a bill. So I need to go kick this off, um, and we do that under Report Schedules. So under Report Schedules, you can see that we have never executed on this instance. So we're going to execute now. And if we have all the right information, it's going to start pulling back a whole bunch of billing data. Um, this is going to take a while. So just like you saw the web page being kind of slow, this process does take a little bit. Um, the first few times you run it. After this, um, well, the first time you run it, um, it's going to catch up to where you are. Uh, in your billing cycles, and then it's going to be running about a day or two behind. I think the, the billing information available in the in Azure uh, via the API is maybe two days behind. So it'll it'll pull a report every day, but it's only going to be pulling for those you know days going forward. So it'll be much faster at that. So hopefully you've found this useful and you're able to get started using Azure integration with cloud management and ServiceNow. Um, if you have any questions, obviously your, your ServiceNow account team is eager to help. Um, I promise they know where to find me for better and for worse. Um, so if it, uh, if it comes down to that, um, you can get some more expert help hands on. Have a nice day. Microsoft even has a convenient little click to copy icon. So we're going to copy this icon or this uh, uh, global identifier down. Um, we can either paste it into Notepad or somewhere else worth saving. I don't know why I keep doing that because it's going to make me do this three times. But I can scratch my nose while I'm waiting. Because <sighs> we're not obscuring that key in any way, so I had to blur it out. Um, this is like Bill and Ted's video editing. I'm reminding myself to come back later and blur out those uh, moments.